Before any topic, including math, can become interesting, you got to learn a little bit about the terminology. I'll try to make this as painless as possible. So before we start talking about matrices, it's kind of good to get the terminology down. What is a matrix? Well, you could look at a matrix as being a sequence of sequences. Each one of those sequences is exactly the same length, so whenever you were to put them down in rows, it would be a perfect rectangle, okay? And in this case, what we've got is M rows. Each row has N columns. Now, if you were to pick out a specific element in this matrix, you can see that each one has kind of two subscripts. The first subscript identifies which row you're going to find it in. The second subscript is going to identify which column you found that in. So something that is A sub 5, 3, that would be the fifth row, the third column. Now, in some cases, you might see commas placed in between them. For the purpose of this discussion, where I don't have any matrices that are bigger than 10 by 10 or bigger than 9 by 9, we'll leave out the column. So 5, 3, that would just indicate that we were in the fifth row, the third column. Now, another way to look at this, as I said, it kind of a matrix is a sequence of sequences. What you have is, for example, the ith row of this matrix. Well, that's actually a matrix in itself, not necessarily called a matrix. You know, when you get into physics, you talk about these, these matrices that have a dimension in a direction of one. Sometimes you call them vectors, okay? But what we've got here is if the ith row, that is really just a matrix of dimensions m equals one, a single row, with n columns. Or we could look at it as a single column. So a column with n m elements, so you have an m by 1 matrix, which is once again a vector. Now, some of the things that we have whenever it comes to matrices, we have these special matrices. All right, and some of these special matrices, uh, well, let's talk about uh, a square matrix. So A is a square matrix if the dimensions m by n, right, if m equals n. Kind of makes sense, right? You have exactly the same number of rows as you have columns. So if I have this matrix, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, that is a square matrix. And sometimes what you say is that, for example, if this is A, you would say A is a square matrix of order n, if we've got n by n, right? So in this case, A is a square matrix of order 3. Now, we have special matrices within this topic of square matrices. So A is a square matrix if the dimension, if the number of rows equals the number of columns. But we also have this idea of a symmetric matrix. So A is a symmetric matrix if it is square and for all A sub and we'll just simply say a sub i j, where 0 is less than or equal to i, less than or equal to m, and 0 is less than j, less than or equal to m, where m is the dimension. Remember, we've got this dimension that is the same in both the number of rows and the number of columns. But the idea is, for a symmetric matrix, I'm making this a far more complicated than it needs to be. I'll show you an example in a minute. It is symmetric if for every one of those i's and j's, a sub i j is equal to a sub j i. Now, a symmetric matrix gives you the opportunity to represent some specific or special types of matrices that we can do mathematical operations on. But let me give you an example of this symmetric matrix. So once again, it's a square matrix. And so we've got A is equal to, 
uh, we'll just say one, two, three down the diagonal. And then in this position right here, if I have a four, then I also have a four up here. If I have a five in this lower corner, a lower left corner, I have a five in the upper right corner. If I have a six in this middle of the bottom row, I also have a six in the middle of the last column. So that is a symmetric matrix. So we have A is a symmetric matrix. If, and I'm going to leave some, some words out here, we're going to say if, remember that the across the diagonal, and it's, when I say diagonal, I'm talking about from the upper left corner down to the lower right hand corner. So if AIJ is equal to AJI. Now, next one, A is a diagonal matrix. Now this is very similar to a symmetric matrix, except there's something very special about the elements that are being mapped on either side of the diagonal. So A is a diagonal matrix if for every I not equal to J, then A sub I J is equal to zero. So let's go ahead and do this, uh, do an example of a diagonal matrix. So I've got, once again, we have one, two, three on our diagonal. Now all these elements that mapped across that diagonal, in this case, they all have to be equal to zero. And so now it looks like a symmetric matrix, and in fact it is a symmetric matrix, except the elements that are being mapped are always zero. Now it is okay if one of the elements on the diagonal is also zero, but the key is, is that the items that get mapped on either side of that diagonal have to be zero. Now we have a very special type of diagonal matrix. And let's see if I can get this pen to continue to work for just a little longer. A is an identity matrix if it is a diagonal matrix and A, I, I. Notice that there's the same value for both the row and the column, which means their values are on the diagonal if AII is equal to one and everything else is equal to zero. So an identity matrix would look like ones on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. And we'll find out that we have a special use for those too. For example, whenever we're just doing basic mathematical operations, you've probably done things like multiplied by one, right? This is the value or this is the matrix we're going to use to multiply by one. And so if we have this idea of an identity matrix, which acts like a one in matrix arithmetic or will when we start talking about multiplication, there probably has to be some sort of an additive identity, right? In math, the additive identity is zero. Well, turns out there's a zero matrix too. A is a zero matrix. If A sub I J is equal to zero for all I and J in the range, right? All right. And it has a special way of being denoted. Typically, you'll see it denoted as zero M by N, which just basically says I've got an M by N matrix filled with zeros. Now, to give you an idea of what you might see in the real world when it comes to matrices, hey, we've got this little symmetric matrix. How do we know it's symmetric? Well, the values that are in the lower corner map up diagonally across the diagonal to the upper corner, right? And so here's just a, a symmetric matrix of the distances between some, I don't know, some fairly large cities, right? And so down the diagonal, notice that there are all zeros there. Why? Because the distance from the city to itself is gonna be zero. But if you've got a distance from city A to city B, that's the same as the distance from city B to city A, which is giving you that diagonal matrix.
So let's get a couple of other ideas or concepts out of the way before we start talking about the operations we can perform on matrices. Well, first of all, what does it mean for two matrices to be equal? If matrix A equals matrix B, what does that mean? Well, first of all, the dimensions, and when I'm talking about the dimensions, I'm talking about the M by N must be the same. In other words, a 5 by 3 matrix can equal a 5 by 3 matrix, but a 5 by 3 matrix cannot equal a 3 by 5. The second thing is, is that every element, A sub i, j, must equal B sub i, j for all elements. And when I say A sub uh, i, j, I'm talking about the elements of A. When I'm talking about B sub i, j, I'm talking about the elements of B. For all elements where... 0 is less than or equal to i, less than or equal to m, right? And 0 is less than j, is less than or equal to n. So there's equality. Basically, has to have exactly the same numbers, same dimensions, everything. Now, another thing that you're going to hear, another term you're going to hear over and over again, is this idea of transposing. Now, we're going back to this diagonal, right? So transpose. First of all, if I'm going to take the transpose of A, the way I'm going to represent it, or the, the nomenclature I'm going to use, is, so we're going to say represented by A with a little superscript T. And what we're going to do is we're going to, well, it's kind of like if you took a playing card and you held it along the diagonal. The transpose means that that diagonal stays where it is, but the card gets flipped. So we're going to transpose. That's really what we're talking about with this matrix. So what you've got is that we'll just say the transpose of A represented by is where A sub I J is equal to A sub J I of the transposed matrix. Right? And so we're just going diagonally across that, uh, across that diagonal. For all of the i greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to m, and all j greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to n. We actually are going to talk about one theorem right now, and it's a pretty simple theorem. What you're going to say is that the transpose of the transpose is equal to the original matrix. That actually kind of makes sense, right? So if you take this card and if you flip it, if you flip it once and then flip it again, guess what? It's exactly the same card, right? We'll get to other theorems in later lessons. But there's one other thing that I want to talk about. A is a symmetric matrix if a sub t excuse me the transpose of a is equal to a and that kind of makes sense right you're going across the diagonal and if it's exactly the same matrix then you know that you have a symmetric matrix so what's next well in order to take advantage of all the different capabilities of matrices and vectors we're going to have to learn how to manipulate them that's going to be in the next lessons